G'day, how you doing? Adam Williams here from Easy Way Photography. What I've got for you in the next two evenings, two lessons, about 15 or 20 minutes each, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about getting started in Photoshop so that you can begin to transform your images into something absolutely spectacular and breathtaking. Let me show you the image we're going to be working on here and you'll find a link in the description to download which will allow you to follow along as we work on this particular image but what I want to show you just quickly is the finished product that we're going to end up with after these two short lessons so here's the raw file here and once we finish with it applying some very simple techniques it's going to look like that there so a huge transformation now before you jump in and say well i don't want to create dark and gloomy images and it looks a bit fake and this and that doesn't matter the techniques that i teach in here you can transform your images into stunning natural breathtaking landscapes or you can take them down the path of dark and gloomy you can essentially take this workflow down any path you desire now let's go ahead and get started i've got the raw file here so if you haven't downloaded the raw file yet, just pause this video now, jump up to the description, click on the link and download this particular raw file. Okay, so go and do that now. And then the very next step, once you've got that file downloaded, what you want to do, put it on your desktop, download it somewhere very easy to find. So download to your desktop and then obviously you're going to need to have Photoshop. I recommend having something either CS5 or, or newer or greater, so CS5, CS6 or Photoshop CC, which is the online version which I'm using here, but CS5 or CS6, they're much the same anyway, so either ones of those. Open up Photoshop would be the next step, so go ahead and open up Photoshop now, and then to open this image, we just go to the file menu here, open, and then from the desktop, here's mine here. It's called Camel Rock. It'll be called Camel Rock when you download it to your desk desktop too. Double click on that and it will open into Photoshop or just click on it and click open and that will open into Photoshop, no dramas. You can see I've got that there. You'll see some very obvious fake dust spots which I've added here just so I can show you the dust spot removal technique rather obviously as we move along. Okay, so this is kind of a condensed workflow. It's not the complete workflow that I teach at easywayphotography.com.au and I'll mention that a little bit later, but we won't touch on that. It's not complete. This is designed to get you in and started and comfortable in Photoshop and then you can take it from there. Now, what we're going to do first before we start working on the image is just make sure that we all have the same workspace active if you like and the way we do that is just move up to the top right corner just below where you can see the X that closes Photoshop there'll be a menu there okay just the second one in from the right the one on the right which looks like a download icon not that one the next one in there's a little drop arrow and expansion arrow click on there and select photography okay and then click back on that same menu and click reset photography and you'll get this particular menu here. Now we're going to change or modify this just a little bit. And I like to, because I like to have some space for certain things, I need certain screen real estate to make my life easier or our lives easier when we're processing landscape images. So libraries, I've never really found a use for libraries. So all we're going to do is click and hold on the tab where it says libraries, drag it to the middle of the screen and close it okay now if you ever want one of these elements back at a later date you see a tutorial on YouTube or whatnot and they're using something else over on the window menu you know if you wanted libraries for example you just click on libraries and we can put that back essentially anywhere where we want it so we re remove libraries and we're also going to remove histogram in fact click and drag histogram onto the desktop there or the, the workspace and then pick it up again, click and hold, and we're going to place it in this vertical bar. Now you'll see a blue light turn on, and it's the blue light turns on based on where your mouse cursor is. Okay, so if my mouse cursor is outside there, it wants to create another vertical bar, but I want it in this vertical bar, so I just hover there, and you'll see I can place it in between, above, but just below will do for now. 
Okay, so there's my histogram there. Navigator, I don't really use Navigator. You might, and you might want to put it in this vertical bar, but I'm just going to close that down, knowing that I can get it back from the window menu at any stage I like. Now, moving up to that window menu, I'm going to click on Properties. Very important in this workflow is Properties. Click on that, and you'll see it was actually hiding in this little sidebar here, but I like it over in this space. So I'm going to grab it and place it on the desktop, and then I'm also going to click and place it above Adjustments. So not with Adjustments, above, and let go. You can see if I hold it up on the Adjustments tab, the entire Adjustments box lights up blue, but if I push a little higher, it forms a little line just above Adjustments, and that's what I want, just above up there. And look, I'm also going to, I'm going to move my adjustments because pretty much everything in this adjustments panel is found in these adjustments down here. And we're going to use these adjustments via this little black and white cookie, this little black and white circle right down the bottom right, because it gives us more screen real estate for everything else, for our layers, etc., etc. So we'll close that for now. Also this little info icon I don't really use that too, so that can go too. That looks absolutely perfect. Let's move on with processing this particular image. So what we're going to do first, the first steps that we do once we get into Photoshop are file correction. So the very first thing that we're going to do is duplicate the background layer and do a color correction initially. So press Command or Control J, Control J on a PC or Command J on a Mac, and you'll see you get a duplicate layer in the layer panel over here. Okay, and then we're just going to move up to the image menu, top of screen, adjustments, image menu, adjustments, scroll down, match color. And this is a bit of a hidden secret menu, but it does a great job for color correction. We just click the neutralize button here. And in this case, it hasn't done a lot, but it's taken a little bit of the blue out. If I click OK, you can see I can turn off that color correct layer. Maybe we should name the layer too for the time being. Generally, I don't name my layers, but I guess when we're starting out, it might be a good idea to know what everything is for now. If we double click where it says layer one, double click there, and we'll just call this one color correct. Apologies if I spell anything wrong. I'm pretty hopeless at spelling. I'm so hopeless at spelling that spell check often doesn't even know what I'm doing. And I have to go to Google and type my word into Google because for some reason Google understands my bad spelling better than spell check. All right, so color correct. And if we turn that on and off with this little visibility eyeball here, you can see a slight change. It's taken a little bit of that blue out, which is great. That's a great start. Okay, we're still in file correction mode. The next thing we're going to do is straighten the horizon. If we press C on the keyboard, C for crop, that will enable the crop tool, or we can just come over here to the left-hand side and click on the crop tool, this one here. If we hover on there, you can see Photoshop tells us that's the crop tool. And in fact, if we click and hold on that icon, you can see there's several tools under there. So just make sure that we do in all in fact have just this top standard crop tool highlighted. And you can see that by that little white box on the left that I have the standard crop tool activated. Now, if you happen to have some strange ratio in the box here, just click clear and then move over here and click on the little refresh button just so we're back out all on the same path. And I've got some strange diagonal overlay on here too. If we move along the top of the menu, you can see just next to the word straighten on Photoshop CC is the overlay menu. Look, generally I like to use the rule of thirds overlay. It's kind of the standard overlay, so I'll switch back to that. Not that it really matters right now just double checking all of our menu options. So ratio, we have no ratio, that's cleared out. You've got the straighten tool, that's what we're going to be using to straighten the horizon here. You've got your overlay menu, okay? So I'm on rule of thirds and always, always show overlay. That doesn't really matter for now. The next one along, 
there's my settings there. Okay, they're pretty standard. I don't believe I've ever changed them whatsoever. And then you've got delete cropped pixels. Okay, this one I would turn off so that it's not checked because essentially what that does is allows you to crop non-destructively. So in other words, if we make a crop like this and click OK, not that we're going to, and then we come back to the crop tool, we can stretch back out and recover those pixels. Okay, but I still wouldn't crop until the end of the workflow because it just doesn't work well with the adjustment layers anyway. So we're not going to be cropping, well, excuse me, we're not going to be cropping anything like that just yet. What we are going to do is straighten the horizon. Grab the straighten icon here. Either click on the word straighten or click on the icon, the little builders level there. And then all we do is click with the mouse and hold down. We could even zoom in once maybe. Click with the mouse and sorry, zooming in is press down command or control plus and zoom out is command or control minus. Command being a Mac, control being a PC. And we click with our mouse and hold down and drag across the horizon. In this case, I've only just got that little piece of horizon that is the most accurate. So once I'm happy with that aligning, obviously that's not aligning, we just come down and align it with the horizon as perfect as we can. Let go and you'll see that automatically rotates to straight and it even crops in nicely for us. If we want to adjust that a little bit, of course we can. Something like that. Click OK or click the arrow. All right, so we've color corrected, straightened our horizon, let's remove the dust. The most important thing I think with dust removal is to apply the process on a blank layer. That makes it non-destructive or if we mess it up, we're able to easily fix that up without permanently changing the background layer if you like. So a blank layer down in the very bottom right corner, there's the trash can to the left of that is the little page icon. Click on that page icon and we'll get a blank layer called on my stream now or my layer stack here, layer one. If we double click where it says layer one, we'll change the name to dust removal. Hopefully that's right, fingers crossed. Okay, and then we're going to use the spot healing brush. Okay, so we can press J as a keyboard shortcut. Okay, if you can't find the tool, just press J and that will highlight. And what we're going to do is, well, actually let's click and hold on that tool to make sure we've all got the same tool because you can see there's a whole bunch of tools, you know, underneath that menu as well. We want the top tool here, spot healing brush tool. And you can see I have my little white active box next to that, which is perfect. If you didn't, you would just click on that particular tool. And we can use the square brackets up near enter or return. Just above enter or return, you'll see square brackets and they'll make the size smaller or bigger depending which side you press. And we just want to comfortably cover our dust spot roughly like that. That looks pretty good. Let's go through these menus. That one's nothing. The next one along is our size, hardness and spacing. Now these are the settings I like to use. Hardness 100%, spacing around 25%. They seem to work well with the current version of Photoshop. However, in the past I have used hardness at 50% and even 75%. So have a bit of a play around. If the 100% is not working and maybe leaving hard edges or something like that, try 75% or even 50%. That, that might work better. The angle and roundness, they're the defaults, 0 and 100%, I leave it at that. Mode, we want normal. And then type, make sure you click on content aware. And the very most important step, because we're dust removing onto a blank layer, we need sample all layers to be ticked like so. And then easy as that, it's very simple, just click on each dust spot as you go, and they will just magically disappear if we can find them all. I don't even remember where I put them all. Just like that. Looks beautiful actually. There's a tricky one that I've left for last right on the edge of this rock surface. Let's see how that goes. 
Beautiful, pretty good. Sometimes what happens is, I'll just press Command Z to backspace there. Sometimes what happens is it might do something weird, although that's pretty good as well. And you might need to do just a couple of spots just to tidy that up or something like that, or even change the size of the brush, okay? But that looks pretty good. Okay, we have color corrected, straighten the horizon, dust removal. The next step is something called auto curves. Absolutely incredible. It's going to give you a beautiful kickstart in your workflow and automatically adjust the brightness and the contrast of your image. Move down here, right down the bottom right corner, down near where we found the blank page or the blank layer, we have a black and white circle, half black, half white. If you click on that, you get the menu of adjustment layers. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about them in the next tutorial tomorrow evening. For the time being, we just want to select curves for our auto curves adjustment. And then you should have a properties panel like this and all we're going to do is click the auto button. Okay, and you can see that made a little bit of a change, pretty good. But if we hold down Option or Alt, Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, and click that Auto button again, we get the full menu here. And it's just a case of just clicking through this menu and finding the one that is, I guess, most suitable or goes in the direction of where we wish to take the image. So the, the step that goes closer to where we want to end up, I suppose. They're all quite nice. I think the first one, that's the, the default is enhanced brightness and contrast. I think it's a little bit too bright to tell you the truth initially. Uh, so I like enhance monochromatic contrast and then you can also click on snap neutral midtones. And I actually like that. It's a little bit more neutral, isn't it? Oh, actually it goes a little bit green. I'll leave it off. I'll leave it off. I changed my mind. Click OK. And that essentially is all our file correction done. The very next step and what we're going to go through tomorrow night is transforming the image into, as I said, we're going to add the layers and talk about layers and layer masks. And you're going to absolutely love the freedom that Photoshop gives you to paint in adjustments, adjustments essentially wherever you want them. And what we're going to do tomorrow night is we're going to take that point there and transform it into this finished image here. So make sure you come back tomorrow night, take a look at the stream, or in fact, if you're looking at this tutorial at a later date, have a look in the description. The link to the very next video, the step two video, will be in the description as well. And you can just click on that and move on to the next video if you're ready to go. Okay, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it easy enough to follow along. I'll keep it nice and slow again tomorrow as we look at the adjustment layers and uh, masking. You're going to absolutely love it. Thanks again for watching along. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.